Okay, my beautiful loves, let's talk about skate safety. Before we even get started, let's talk about the gear that you are gonna wanna buy for your roller skating hobby. I'm gonna try and make this as simple as possible because the last thing I want is for you to go out and waste a bunch of money on gear that you don't really need. So I'm gonna hit you with the basics of what would be good. Before we get started, you might be thinking, but Deja, if you're not wearing any safety gear, that's because I'm a hypocrite, okay? I've accepted this. I fully acknowledge that I am being very hypocritical right now. I also acknowledge that I'm an athlete and I have been working out for the past six years, which means I have a very strong connection to my body. Mind-body connection is like on 10. Not meaning that I never fall, I definitely fall, but I'm more aware of how to fall, which I will teach you. The whole reason why I created this roller skating course with the idea of helping you develop your mind-body connection is so that you can get to that point where if you don't want to have safety gear on, you don't have to have it. Is it highly recommended? Because no matter what, you can't control anything? Absolutely. I know that as we adults, roller skating is already scary. So what gear do I need? How do I not waste my money? The first thing that you need is a helmet. The biggest mistake that I see a lot of adult skaters make is they get a helmet that is too small for their adult size head. So get a helmet that fits your head appropriately. The next thing you're gonna need, knee sleeves. A lot of times they'll have this cute little sleeve that you can actually put your knee inside of and you wanna make sure that it, they fit nice and snug. For the purposes of this video, you guys already know I'm a hypocrite, but Okay, if I wasn't a hypocrite, this is what they would look like. You wanna make sure that they are right side up and that you're not accidentally putting elbow sleeves onto your knees and wondering why your knees aren't protected. The next thing that I would recommend is elbow sleeves because few things suck more <laughs> than chipping an elbow on hard concrete. Okay. We're styling, we're profiling. Safety is sexy, okay? Don't let anybody steer you in the wrong direction or make you feel like you are not cool for gearing up, okay? And the final thing that I would definitely recommend are wrist guards. These bad boys should have a nice little firm piece inside and that's just gonna make sure that we, <laughs> that's just gonna make sure we don't break any wrists, okay? Few things suck worse than when I get a message from someone and they're like, oh my God, I'm gonna try roller skating. This is gonna be so fun. And I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, man, you're doing the damn thing. And then they DM me and they're like, oh, I broke my wrist. And I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that you don't get to participate in the awesomeness that is roller skating. Boom, we're geared up. I don't have a helmet, because again, I'm a hypocrite and I don't know where it is, but you should definitely have a helmet, make sure it fits your adult brain. Falling becomes that much less scary when you have gear on. If this still does not feel enough for you, the only other thing that I would recommend is this bad boy. Let's see if we can put these on. I already put my skates on, but we're gonna see. This is not a good plan. I should have put all of this on first, but you can tell that I don't. Oh, it worked. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Pull that bad boy up, oh, boom. Do you see that? Pull this bad boy up, but you don't even know that we're geared up. Okay, so these shorts make it so that if you were to, you know, bust your ass, it would hurt considerably less. And you can just put these on right under your skirt. You guys know how I feel about skating in skirts, you know? So if you need a little bit of extra cushion for your pushing, money. We are in here. This is the safety gear that I would recommend. Don't go wasting your money on a whole bunch of other stuff. Make sure you just have the basics. If you're gonna do it, some pads, some wrist guards, some knees. Go ahead and get some little booty and hip pads. I feel so supported. I almost wanna like run into stuff just to get some booty and hip pads and I promise you'll be fine. Let's talk about falling. Falling is going to happen. If you are geared up, falling becomes less scary but you should still know techniques for falling. Let's start how to avoid falling. The best way to avoid falling is to make sure that your knees stay nice and bent. Stay nice and bent. That is the best way. The biggest way that people fall is their weight shifts too far back to their heels and then they start to swing and they, they make their body real big. If you're about to fall, try and practice oh no go low. So try to train yourself that if you feel yourself start to swing, oh no go low. You grab onto your knees and you, you bend down. Hands on your knees. Hands on your knees. To reestablish your center of balance. Oh no, go low. Let's say, oh no, go low has failed and we're, we're going down. The best thing that you can do is commit to a fall. If you know you're gonna fall, the best thing you can do is commit to a side and fall. So if you feel yourself falling, try and commit to a fall. You don't wanna land on outstretched hands. If you have wrist guards, it's a little bit easier for you to just fall and let it go. Let yourself go if you have it but you don't wanna fall on outstretched hands at all. The best things that you can do is pick a side and commit. So, okay, I'm going down. I'm committing to that side. And if I have hip pads on, like I do right now, 
I would just, boom, let that baby rest on the hips. Commit to the fall. I like to practice falling into a push-up, which prevents me from falling on outstretched hands, and it makes my elbows act as shock absorbers for me. So we're falling down, and we're bending versus, we might as well lean into it and distribute the force throughout our body versus resting it here. So oh no, go low here, and then committing to it and picking a side. And you do that by getting as low as possible to the ground. If we're low to the ground, we have less distance to fall. We are, and then we're here, we're down already. The important thing to understand here is falling is going to happen, but if you're falling consistently, you might be trying something that is just a little bit too difficult for you. Or if you're falling so fast that you don't understand what's going on or how you fell down, you might need to just slow down a little bit. Maybe tighten up your wheels to lessen any speed, but pay attention to how you are falling to prevent yourself from falling. You're gonna fall down, it's gonna happen. You're trying something new and scary, but there are falls that can be prevented and can be made less dangerous with the use of safety gear and by understanding what your body is doing or how certain types of falls happen. If we're falling like this backwards, our weight has shifted too far into our heels. So we fall back that way, the only thing that we can do is try to avoid falling on an outstretched arms as much as possible. So we're, and kind of roll back into it, which is much easier and feels much safer to do if you have a helmet. If you don't have a helmet, understand that this is a physical activity, that it can be very dangerous. So your knees are way more forgiving when you have pads on. You're just starting out, get some pads, get geared up, practice falling practice oh no go low so that you can prevent falling in the first place. Practice understanding your body mechanics and leaning into your fall. Avoid outstretched limbs as much as possible. Committing to it and allowing your arms to be <laughs> those shock absorbers for you. So those are my top tips for learning how to fall or falling safer, safely-ish. <laughs> Hopefully this was super helpful to you and I will see you in the next one.